Welcome back to Breakthrough Lifeline. My name is Chris Crone, and I believe that you are one breakthrough away from your next level up. Today, we've got the opportunity to sit down with a gentleman named Phil, who's had his share of success. He built from scratch a multi-million dollar consulting firm. At one point, he was a pro golfer, and yet somehow along the journey, he's gotten lost and he's not living his highest and best life. And you know what? I think that's true for all of us. Don't we just get to a point in life where we stagnate, where essentially we get in a rut, we get in the motion, we get in the routine, and before you know it, we've lost our way and we feel like it's time to reinvent ourselves. And today, feels ready to reinvent himself. Listen, uh, from the little I know, you've had some great moments of success in your life, but you've also come back from some really hard moments. We're talking about some substance abuse addiction, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so I had my time where I was on cocaine for a bit. Not very proud of it, but uh, so it was part of my life. But you figured it out. Yeah, I had to figure it out because I was losing everything. Really? And uh, that was pulling at my heart quite a bit really what uh, what went down in that in that dumpster fire well as I had a broken heart when the marriage failed it's you know I felt like I was in a relationship treated like trash and so I wanted to find a way to treat myself like trash yeah. and I started drinking that's how it started okay. and I learned that my business partner had lived a party life all his life I decided that moment that uh with the money that I had access to, that I would live that Jordan Belfort movie life. Yep. And that's what I did. I, th I thought that was the right idea at yep. the time. That broken heart just, uh, it destroyed me. Yeah. It was, and I didn't know how to get, out, get over it. There is no amount of drugs, there's no amount of alcohol, booze, that will actually fill that gap. And yet I look at your body and you don't exactly look like the spitting image of like health and fitness. So you found a different way to yes. self-destruct. Yes. Tell me about this extra hundred pounds. So, you know, I, rever I reverted to food quite a bit, okay. you know, for that emotional attachment to that instant feel good moment yeah. to help wipe away those, those feelings and holding on to this weight that, you know, brings me down. It affects me a lot. Well, I've had the chance to meet your amazing wife. You know, when I look at the two of you, I'm like, okay, so the first marriage failed, but you found a way to overcome your addiction. You're back in uh, a new relationship. You guys look really happy. I mean, it looks like yeah. there's been some level ups along the way, and yet there's still a ceiling, something holding you back. Personally, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm just struggling physically. I am the only one in my family that fights a weight problem. Yeah. I emotionally eat, eat at night, and I don't sleep well, testosterone's down. Yeah. And I've made steps to, to make those changes, but never was committed. This is very much an opportunity to say what's really going on, because are you ready for your next level up in life? I wanna be the best I could be, and these physical constraints that I have right now are inhibiting that. But I have not found the motivation yet to push myself and that's where moments like this happen. Well, brother, uh, we're about to have the conversation that can make that completely possible. And you're doing a great job being vulnerable, so I commend you on that. I appreciate that. it. Makes me nervous though, I'll tell you that. Oh, <laughs> you're in the hot seat for sure. Yeah, because I, I want to be completely honest. Yeah, there's a fear. Right. Because um, I, I, I built walls and protections. Yeah, well, shall we see? <laughs> Let's do this thing. Okay. <laughs> Just ready, let's go. Cool. When you think of your weight and the lack of motivation, what is the number one limiting belief coming up for you that is eliminating that motivation? Well, I feel like I'm letting my son and my wife down. Which son? My son, Philip. So, Philip. Mm hmm Pause. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. What's the first memory that comes up for you when you have the thought, I'm gonna let them down? I'm gonna bring this out. There is a block that happens from my childhood. It's a block that I've 
didn't know existed till about three years ago. Who's it with? Uh, f uh, a foster brother. Yeah. And uh, a few years ago, I was sitting around the table. I was talking to my kids, and then we we're talking about their experiences with uh, their molestation and rapings that had happened to them. And then all of a sudden, these visions came into my head of. of uh, a little boy being, you know, stripped down and shoved behind the door and being sexually mutilated by his foster brother. So Phil, I want to invite you to get out of the part that is logical, mm. drop into your heart and actually be there behind the door and remember it because there is something we need to retrieve. I want you to go to the most damaging memory. Well, I remember at that moment that I just wanted one of my dad to come in. Yeah. But he didn't. No, he, he, was, he was working. Yeah. So what did you decide about Phil in that moment? I just... I wanted that he hero to come in, and uh, I felt like that's perhaps the the hero that I always want to be for yeah. for everybody. Open your eyes, <laughs> Phil. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. My hands wet. So. The decision that you made about yourself is that you're waiting for someone to save you. I can, I can see that pattern for sure. Where do you see that on your life right now? I can't even take it to this very moment. Because I want, I want to do things on my own. Yeah. And reaching out for help is hard. I beat my addiction on my own, and the first but one. I turned it into something else. Yeah, it's still, it's still an addiction that is attempting to end your life. So even though this addiction is probably healthier than cocaine overdose or being an alcoholic, it's still an addiction, and you overcame one thing. You trade, you did trade it for another. You're still waiting for someone to come and rescue you. What I hear you thinking is, I'm letting Philip down. I'm letting all my kids down. I'm letting Emily down. I'm letting my father down. I'm letting myself down. And I'm waiting. Clearly, I'm the one that needs to make this happen, but I don't feel the motivation because I'm instructed to wait. Someone's going to show up. Someone's going to show up and then it's gonna change. So that's your internal dialogue. And that internal dialogue is what's bringing you to this moment. If you can shift that dialogue, that's what creates the breakthrough where all of a sudden your mind can perceive new possibility. If you want new things, if you want new possibilities, Phil, you have to create new input, new instruction. And so we're gonna play with that and then we're gonna go back to this little hurt eight-year-old boy. You ready? Yeah. Instead of, I'm afraid of disappointing Philip. It's such disempowering language because you think about that how often? Quite often. Does a day go by where you don't worry about disappointing him? <clears throat> no. When you look in the it's mirror, day. do you already know that you're disappointing him? I feel that way, yes. Yeah. What do you got to turn that into? Instead of, I'm afraid of disappointing and letting down, it's got to be what? I'm setting the example. I, I set the example. I'm living an inspired life. I take care of my body. I am healthy. I make good choices with my food and exercise every single day. I'm an example to my family of good, healthy choices. Now, if you actually believed that, and that's what was always going on in the background, what would shift in your behaviors? I think, well, decisions would just come easily. I mean, I, w I wouldn't make so many decisions that I do now yeah. to be more effective. And so when you say I'm healthy and I'm fit, I get that that does not align 
with your history and what you've been telling yourself. And so it feels weird, it feels wrong, and it feels awkward. But if you'll pour faith into this present tense statement of I'm healthy and fit and get to the point where you believe it, then when you're at the grocery store, you'll stop reaching for what you don't need that'll never satisfy because you've come to believe that you're now something different. Breakthrough is putting faith in what you want and fear is putting faith in what you don't want. So right now you're pouring faith into disappointment, letting down or waiting for someone to come. So let's address that one instead of I'm waiting for a euro. Is anyone coming to the rescue, Phil? No. Is Emily coming to the rescue? No. Do you want Philip to be the one that does role reversal with his dad and rescues you? No. No. There's only one person that can take real accountability and ownership of your life. It's me. In this moment where we're about to go, we're going to go back into the darkness. We're going to face that helpless little child that does not know how to save himself from his foster brother. And while we can't change, Phil, what happened, you can change the lesson you got from it. The lesson you got from it is wait and don't disappoint. And that is what you're doing. So the language is going to be, I'm self-motivated, I'm ready, I show up every day for myself. That dialogue produces a very different body. So are you ready to face it? I, I wanna face it because I want to move forward. Okay, close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Eight years old, dad's at work. Your foster brother pulls you aside. He corners you behind the door and hurts you. In this moment, you are looking, Phil, for somebody to show up for you and your dad's not coming and mom's not coming. So I want to invite in this memory a version of you to show up for this little eight-year-old, the hero version of you that is living your healthiest life as your highest and best self. Invite that version of you to the aid of this little boy. And if your highest and best, healthiest version of you walked in on your stepbrother doing this to eight-year-old Phil, what would you do? So in your mind, allow that. In your mind, allow your ability to save this little boy and make the space safe for him and rescue him. Bring him to safety. And drag him out of the room, out of of the way of, of myself at that moment. So kick him out and go back in the room because in there, there's a little boy hurting. I would just grab him and put a blanket around him and and there's something he needs to hear from you. And just tell him it's gonna be all right. Tell him. And just hold him and just tell him it's gonna be okay. That I'm here. That I'll protect you. And repeat after me. I show up. I show up. I show up for me. I show up for me. I am motivated to live my best life possible. I'm motivated to live my best life possible. I'm an example. I'm an example. I've overcome some horrific things. I've overcome some horrific things. And now I live my best life possible. And now I live my best life possible. I'm an inspiration to my family. I'm an inspiration to my family. I inspire me. I inspire me. I make healthy choices. I make healthy choices. All day long. All day long. Especially at night. Especially at night. I'm motivated to put healthy food in my body. I'm motivated to put healthy food in my body. I easily shed this fat suit. I easily shed this fat suit. I step into my most powerful self. I step into my most powerful self. I love me. I love me. I see me. I see me. I show up for me. I show up for me. I'm powerful. I'm powerful. I'm capable. I'm capable. I'm motivated. I'm motivated. I inspire. I inspire. Breathe that in. And it's time for you to go on as your highest and best self, leveling up and living your best life possible. Are you ready? I'm ready. Open your eyes. Well, you tell me what gets to be different now. (laughs) This guy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, what's gonna start shifting? What are you gonna put in action right now? Well, that I I am healthy. I am an example. 
Let's go. You ready? Let's go. You ready? You gonna lose the weight? <laughs> We're gonna. I'm gonna lose this weight. I got, I got some advice for you. <laughs> I have a team to introduce you to. Okay. You serious? Oh, I'm very serious, man. Okay, brother, let's do let's it. Let's do this thing. Thank you, Phil, for joining us today. Of course, thank you. Children observe everything. And because they haven't established all their filters, they're letting it all come in. But they end up being really horrible interpreters. I mean, think about it. We don't even develop abstract thought until we're 15 years old. Most of us don't know how to function as really mature adults until late into our 20s. Children observe a lot, but they misinterpret a lot. And for Phil, he had a hope as an eight-year-old boy that someone would rescue him. And that's put him into a waiting routine in his life. No one escapes childhood without thousands of limiting beliefs. And there's no one breakthrough that's going to resolve all of those. But what I hope you're learning today is that all you need is one breakthrough to get growing again. You only need one breakthrough to start leveling up again. You only need one breakthrough to start moving. When your life is back in motion, eventually you're gonna get held up at the next limiting belief. But remember, you're only one then breakthrough away from leveling up your life. Thank you for joining today.